Hi there, this is the RPS Project, I'm Richard and today I'm going to have another stab at the CD4017 Decade Counter. Uh, I've had a look at this before but without much success actually. It was a disaster, couldn't get it to work at all, it just didn't want to flash or not the way it should do, it was very erratic, didn't count, didn't do anything really than it should be and considering it's such a simple IC um, I thought really I want to have another go at it and make it work because it's, it's a building block for uh, for other circuits so I really wanted to know if I could get it to do what it should be doing and I've had um, some success anyway let's have a look at some of the details got my uh, whiteboard here now what I've done really let's just go over some of the, 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 the items to do with this we've got um, 16 pin IC with 10 um, outputs, um, high low lo um, is it logic or logic, I don't know. Anyway, it, it, it flips between on and off, high and low state, logic, yeah, logic state um, for each output. <laughs> uh, with a few other outputs, first of all, like I say, you've got pins, whatever. Uh, I've done a list of the pins here. Um, pin number and output for the count and then you've got the other outputs or the other pins that we've got on here is we've got a carry out so this takes our signal after every count from 0 to 9 it gives a signal out on the carry out for a next stage if you want a next stage and we also have a clock inhibit to stop it from counting it doesn't it just doesn't reset, it holds it there because this pin 15 is actually the reset and will reset it back to this point on the count whereas the clock inhibit will just hold it at whichever point it's currently at. Um, and that's really it. Now if you want you can take it so that when it gets to count 5 from pin 1 you can take pin 1 round to the reset and it will reset and it will go back and reset itself and go back to here. Well, I've just set it up with the full count going from um, output 0 to 9 with an LED on the carry out. Now, the problems I'd had before was getting it to be stable. And sometimes it wouldn't count properly or it would start counting and then it would either stop or the, the LEDs would start appearing in random orders. And one of the things I found is, first of all, you need to make sure that everything is connected to something. So if you don't use some of these pins, you need to either tie them down to ground or tie them down, tie them up to uh, plus voltage. And with the switches for the reset and the clock inhibit, I found that it says a positive. Um, voltage will either clock inhibit or reset but if you don't have this tied down to somewhere before you give it a positive voltage then it just doesn't seem to work very well and what I've done is put in a capacitor resistor down to ground to um, help get that to operate properly and it seems to work quite well I've used a 1 nanofarad um, capacitor and a one meg ohm resistor on both sides and that seems to make it work all right um, all I need then is an input um, now this input I presume well I've taken it needs to be a fairly decent input and that's what I put it I've tried something quite low and low voltage input and it doesn't seem to quite give it um, so I've used a, a higher input it's about I think it's about eight or nine volts it's actually pretty much the voltage of the supply voltage that's what it seemed to go out what I've actually used is a, uh, a little circuit that I bought um, which has got the XR2206 function generator on there and that seems to work really well uh, on with the square wave output so um, anyway enough of me rabbiting on let's have a look at it so here we go got it all set up on the bench um, now say I had a few little things of um, tying the uh, the clock inhibit and the reset I've got reset over here clock inhibit here 
um, and over here I've got the um, the XR2206 as my input. Of course, once you worked it out, I did uh, work out a, a diagram, a little schematic for um, putting it onto this uh, strip board, and uh, seemed to work quite well, except that um, I, I, well, I put my LEDs in the wrong way round first time. I'd um, not got that right, but uh, never mind. Uh, it worked out right afterwards. Once I'd realised what I'd done wrong. Um, and there you go. So anyway, let's turn it on, see what happens. Now, because I haven't got this tied in any way to ensure that when it comes on, it always comes on at the beginning over here. Sometimes it comes on a bit odd until it gets to refreshing itself in the... Uh, in the stages of, of its on and off stages until it reaches the point where it actually comes back to one. So it might come on a little bit odd to start off with, like such. There you go, and it sort of reset itself now, and now it's counting correctly. And as you can see, that's counting up really quite nicely. Um, all we've got is obviously our outputs from zero all the way through to nine, and this is the carry out output that we take for. Uh, another stage onto some other stage like another counter or something else maybe a um, display driver of some sort uh, whatever you want to take it out for but as you can see as it's coming along here it gets to the the fourth one because it's zero one two three four when it starts at one it turns the clock count um, the carryover on but once it gets to four, when it gets to, to that five, it actually turns it off. So this is on half the time and then off half the time that it's um, going through its cycles. Let's uh, use the clock inhibit and see what that does. There you go, and it's holding it now there at that point. It's not going anywhere else. Turn that off and it carries on on its merry way. And if it's so far along, hit the reset and it resets back to beginning, no matter where it is on that um, on that sequence. Let's uh, turn that up a little bit and get it running. There you go, oh, that looks great now, especially you can see it running on quite quick. Let's just turn this light off, see if, if the auto exposure will work, we can get to see that running through quite well on that uh, on that sequence. Turn it down a little bit. Let's turn it down real slow. And it uh, does take quite some time to go through that sequence. I think I've got this set at one one hertz. It's meant to be one hertz. So I, I presume that's what it's doing. One hertz. Um, let's um, turn it up. Get it going a bit more. Brilliant. Works just fine. Now, let me just turn it down a bit. I have found that on the data sheet it says it, this will run from 5 volts, 10 volts and 15 volts or those sort of voltages all the way up to about 18 volts. So, um, well, it does sort of, but I've got it set at 9 volts and actually I found that if I turn my voltage down um, it's actually about 5.5 volts where it stops functioning so let's just take that down, still going I'm down to 6 volts and now I'm just, see there we go, 5.25 and it's not, 5.3 and it's functioning but below that, it stops functioning. Um, so obviously, it doesn't really run at five volts, I found. I found that um, it actually works, you know, if you need it sort of six volts plus, really, would be uh, a voltage that ensures that it's going to continue to count. Um, now, I don't know if that's because the counter unit requires it to... Um, have a, a 9 volt supply so this is not counting in here but I did have it separate so I had the input for this um, IC 
uh, as the supply voltage separate from the supply voltage for my counter and it still seemed to do the same when I turn the counter down um, to below 5 volts it stopped uh, functioning so it does seem to be that the input voltage needs to be of a uh, reasonable value for it to um, keep functioning. Let's turn that light back on again. Um, so anyway, let's have a look at the, uh, the data sheet for this. Um, so I can show you the, the, the clock output for this IC. So here we have the data sheet for the CD4017 and the CD4022. Um, the 4017 being the de decade counter with 10 decoded outputs and the 4022 octal counter with 8 decoded outputs. I had a quick look at this last time. Uh, quick overview, just tells you how to set it up, where to um, connect your, uh, your pinouts, what to watch for for your clock inhibit and your reset. Um, even though I read it last time, didn't seem to be able to make it work. This time did. Um, basic specs on voltages, um, clock input f frequency, let's have a look, clock input supply voltage, anything between 3 to 18 volts. I've had it on 9 volts, seemed to work alright. Now it goes on about clock frequencies, um, clock input frequency, I don't know, on about 9 volts, so it's nearer to that 10 volts there. Maximum is 5 megahertz, which is fine. Clock pulse width, I was using the um, square wave, at about 10 volts is 90 nanoseconds. I've no idea what it was on mine because um, I have never checked it out to see what it is. Anyway, fairly simple to set up. Quick overview of the um, schematic internals of it. Uh, now, I had it connected with the carry out um, on this. Let me have a quick look at a. Where have I put it? There we go. This is the signal diagram for the for the timing for the 4017. When you first turn it on, um, I've got it set up so that it just comes on. It's a bit erratic until it gets round to this point of the first count for zero output coming on from this clock pulse, and it seemed to settle down then. But I'd have to find some way of setting that so it always came on at that point. But that's um. That's additional circuitry. I just wanted to make this work in itself. But I see as you get a rising input on the first one, we've got our clock on. And then it's for one whole cycle. It stays on. But as it, as it rises on the next cycle, it latches the first one off, zero off, and one on. And it does that for each clock cycle. Um, when... It first comes on it also turns the um, carry out onto positive so it's it's on you've got it uh, at, at effectively one and it stays that way for one two three four clock cycles you see zero one two three four which is five in it yeah and then as it latches the next one it latches the carry out to zero and stays that way for five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And then as it latches on back for the zero output, the um, carry out goes back up high. So effectively, what we're saying is for every naught to nine clock cycles, you'll get one carry out output, which is um, which is great if you want it for uh, running onto a next sequence in a in a in a clock or a timer or something like that and that seemed to work just fine um, clock inhibit and you can see if you hit the clock inhibit it's almost like it misses um, one clock cycle it holds it at the point where this stays on and doesn't go off until it reaches the next one or until you let go of the clock inhibit and the reset basically it just adds a positive pulse that will bring everything back to this point here <coughs> to restart the um, the timer. It's fairly self-explanatory and seems to work just fine. So, um, yeah, the CD4017 is actually 
quite a nice little IC. Works quite well once you got past the um, glitchiness of making sure that all your outputs are tied high or low and if you're um, got to get your clock inhibitor and your reset also tied in so that they're not floating around and then everything seems to work just fine. So there you have it, CD4017, a great little decade counter, um, great for using in like a clock project or something like that or some sort of counting uh, um, project that needs a incrementing counter, um, works brilliantly, can be a bit twitchy as I found out and I actually had to spend quite a bit of time trying to understand how to wire it up to make it function correctly. Um, but I um, a little bit of practice and some time taken and I'm quite happy with it. it. Seems to work quite well. So there you go. Anyway, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe and all comments are welcome. Time for a brew.